Praise the Lord, saints. Ah, oh, come on now. Praise the Lord, saints. It is good to be here, glory to God. It is good to be here, glory to God. You know, I, I thank God, give an honor to God, glory to God, the head of my life. I thank God for being here, glory to God. I thank God, glory to God, for the invi invitation, glory to God. I thank God for everyone that's here. Truly, you know, I thank God for being counted worthy to be used by him. Being counted worthy to be called into the ministry. Being called wor counted worthy, glory to God, to witness for him. Yeah. Truly, glory to God, you know, I, I thank God because through my trials and my tribulation, I don't mind going through those for Jesus Christ. I really don't. As long as you go through them and not stop in them. So I don't mind going through those. You know, we, we, we've been going through a lot, and, and, and I appreciate God, and I laugh at the devil because nothing he can do is going to stop me. There's nothing he can do that's going to stop me. I got my mind made up. My heart is fixed. No turning back. No turning back. I mean Jesus, all, and I'm in love with the man. I am so in love with Jesus. I love him. He's like somebody I never found before. I never knew no one like Jesus before. And I give honor to God, and I thank him for counting me worthy to call me to be a witness for him. To go through the, 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 the hard times for Jesus Christ, just to do that for him. We had been... In the church, we have been going on a fast and uh, praying and coming to the altar on Saturday and praying and crying out to God. And some of the saints of God needed jobs. Well, God didn't just bless them with one job. They got blessed with two jobs. So everyone in the church now have a job. And one lady had been out of a job maybe since last December, I think. And God had been making a way for her. So after we started doing all of that and fasting and praying and seeking God, we left on a Wednesday night, and someone broke into the church, cut the water lines up under the sink, picked the sink up, busted it in the sanctuary, and tore it up and left the water running. So we got a bill for $975, and only $200 of that was water, and the rest was sewage bill. I thank God because I began to tell the devil again, it's not going to work what you are doing. You can't stop me. My mind made up. So I don't care what you do, devil. It won't stop me nor detour me. Because even if we can't use the sanctuary, we'll come outside and praise God. But you will not stop us. So I, I thank God. And as I was fixing the sink on the inside, someone was on the outside. And I thought the water had busted again. So I said, well, the pipe done busted again. I said, let me go ahead and check the water. And come to find out. There was someone on the side of the church trying to lift the windows up and get in the church while I was in there, trying to break back into the church. So I caught the guy, and I began to talk to him and everything, and he began to take off running and everything. We called the police and everything. But you know what I thank God for? We've been told since we've been there that they were going to shut the church down. We've been told since we've been there, you're not going to preach the gospel over here. We've been told since we've been there, we're going to stop anybody from coming to your church. But I want to tell you something. God has worked miracle after miracle ever since we've been there. He has opened up doors unbelievable. We have had souls to come in, souls to get saved, and we're not backing down. We've come too far. We have come too far, glory to God. We have come too far to stop now, glory to God. We have, I, I'm willing to give my life for God, and I mean that, glory to God. After reading what Paul went through, Peter went through, John went through, do you think I'm going to stop now? I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I love Jesus. I love God with everything in me. We went through that, and I got a call again, and I was out working. I got a call, and we had to adopt my 11-year-old granddaughters. So we had to adopt them. We already had my wife's mother that was, had had several strokes, and uh, my wife had to cut her hours back on her job, and I had to cut back some of the hours on my job. And she asked me, of course, one time, I said, you know, I don't, I don't know what we're going to do. I said, really? Really? That same God, that same God that made a way when they was facing the Red Sea, 
That same God, when Gideon went to battle, he's the same God today, glory to God. You see, it's not how much I have, but it's how much God's got. It's not how big I am, but it's how big my God is. So I stopped telling God about my problems and went to telling my problems about my God. How big he was, and he had did it before, and he'll do it again. I love God for that, glory to God. You know, I appreciate God because what God has done, he has such a reputation with me. I have seen what God, if God can change my life, he can change anybody's life. I'm serious. If, if God can change my life, he can change anybody's life. Whatever comes in my life, I take it in stride. I take it into saying, you know what, God, if you brought me to it, you'll bring me through it. So it, it doesn't matter what, what comes. The Bible says he will put no more on you than you can bear. I believe that with all my heart. I really do believe that. I believe I have been called for such a time as this. I believe that with everything in me, glory to God. And I'm thanking God for that. I really appreciate God. You know, uh, when you think about the ones that have went through all the trials and tribulation and you have made and blazed the, 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 the trailway for us, uh, old younger up, up under you, glory to God. I remember Sister Gertie, uh, 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 Pastor Staten, glory to God, and I think it was... Uh, 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 Pastor Williams was preaching the gospel. If you would have asked me then, would I be saved? I would have said, no, I don't want no part of this. But I'm so glad that God said, I know my thought towards you. And he has a plan for me. I'm so glad God had a plan in my life, glory to God. Some have said you'll be dead by the time you get 16. You won't make it. But that ain't what God said. God said, I got a plan for Even when the devil tried to kill me. God wouldn't let it be, glory to God. If God loved me enough to come all the way out of heaven to send his only son to die for me, I must believe that I must be somebody special to God. I may not be special to you, but I'm special to God. I know I am, glory to God. I, I, I know who I am, and I know whom I am. I am the son of God. I am not only the son of God, but guess what else I am? I am joint heirs with Jesus Christ, glory to God. And if I'm joint heirs with Jesus Christ, glory to God, God is my Father, glory to God. And I believe that if I cry, oh, Father, which are in heaven, glory to God, that's all I got to do, glory to God. I believe God will come to my rescue. I thank God, glory to God, I was sitting and I was asking God, I said, Lord, the atmosphere is sort of calm, and I'm asking God, Lord, what do you want to do in this atmosphere? It's such a pleasant, pleasant atmosphere. Such a pleasant atmosphere. And I'm just praying, and before I came here, glory to God, I was crying out to God later this evening and seeking God for his will to be done. You know, I thank God for the anointing that's in this place, glory to God. All the prayers that went up in this place, glory to God. When I come to the house of God, I always come expecting something. I never come just to come. I come expecting something, glory to God. I expect a healing, a deliverance, glory to God. You know, I, I really do. I expect everything. Everything that we needed, I went to a family reunion. I got a call. All your hotel fees is paid in full. Just come. Everything that we ever needed, God has made a way for me. And, and, and I look sometime and I think about how people said I would never amount to nothing. I don't know what they said about you, but they said I would never amount to nothing. Well, that ain't what God said about me. And what I believe is what God said about me, glory to God. So tonight, glory to God, I come and I want to encourage you, glory to God. I know you may be going through a lot. I realize that. I was coming home, glory to God, one day, and God spoke to me and said, turn around and go to this barber shop. I said, well, Lord, I, I really don't want to go to that barber shop. I don't like the way they got cut hair. I don't want to go to that barber shop. And I kept driving. God said, turn around and go to the barber shop. Well, when I got to the barber shop, the guy charged more than any other barber shop that I go to. So I said, okay, God, I go. I went to the barber shop and everything. I sit there for a while. And I noticed that the guy had turned the barber shop into a church. So he had all, everything of the church covered up. And I'm going to show you how God leads you and guides you. This young man was going through something. His wife had been diagnosed with cancer and it was spreading. And the doctor said that she didn't have long to live. And he said he had quit his job and stopped working to spend time with his wife and his kids and everything and to 
make do it. I'm sitting there and I'm listening to him and I'm being quiet. I'm not saying anything. I'm listening. And he's telling me how hard it is to watch your wife go down this path and there's nothing you can do as a man or a husband. There's nothing you can do but just watch and pray and encourage her. And he began to talk to me with tears in his eyes and I began to listen to him and he began to tell his wife, said, I just want you to enjoy your kids, build memories with your kids and everything, and we're going to build memories together. And I began to tell him, I said, God is able to do anything except fail. He's able to, see, see what, I thank God for each and every one of you being in my life. I thank God for you, Pastor Glass. I thank God for your husband. See, doing, doing, doing a little, little, little fella like this right here playing baseball, and Pastor Glass at that time, her husband was coaching us. And he'll be telling us about Jesus, and that, that one all. I ended up working with him at the county, and I still got told about Jesus because I was on his crew. God had a plan for my life. I didn't even know what God was doing, but God had a plan for my life. You know how you try to get away from it? Uh, oh, who crew I'm on today? You're on, Pastor, uh, you're on, on Roy Glass uh, crew today. Oh, Lord. I know I'm finna hear about Jesus today. And I would try to avoid him, but God had a plan for me. The more I try to avoid him, look, he kept putting me in that way. I didn't know what God was doing. See, sometimes you don't understand what God is doing. But he's working it out for your good, glory to God. He's working it out for your good, glory to God. I have been in clubs. I've been shot at, shot at people. But God had a plan for me. He wouldn't let the devil take me out like that. And I'm so glad about it, glory to God. I am so glad about it. That's a song that we sing in the church, and it says, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, glory to God. This is what I want God to do in my life. I want to encourage you today because I realize that you may be going through something because the devil wants to discourage us. The Bible says he comes to wear out the patience of the saints, glory to God. But I come to let him know, glory to God, if I got to join hand in hand with you, we will not go down like that, glory to God. We will not go down unless we're going down in prayer, glory to God. Other than that, we will not go down, glory to God. We will stand, glory to God, after we have did all we can do. We're going to stand ye therefore in the glory to God, with our lines girded about with truth. But we will not go down like that, glory to God. Won't go down like that. We're going to do God's will. We'll fight to the end. Let's go to the scripture, glory to God. We're going to 1 Samuel. I'm sorry, yeah, 1 Samuel 17 chapter. Can someone give me my glasses, please? <laughs> I got them. <laughs> I thank God, glory to God. When I begin to read this, I begin to seek God. Lord, what do you want me to minister on? We're talking about, I want to show you something. When everybody count you out and say that you're nobody and you're nothing and you'll never amount to nothing, uh, someone may say, well, God can't use you. God can use anybody and anything. He used a jackass to speak, glory to God. He used a rooster, glory to God, to bring to remembrance, glory to God, to Peter, glory to God. God can use anybody and anything, glory to God. He's God. He's a God without limitations, glory to God. Whatever you need, God can be that. Whatever you need, God can be that. Whatever you need him to do, he can do that. And so much more, glory to God. You know, it's not so much about what I know about God that I seek after. I seek after, glory to God, knowing who he really is, because he's so much more than that that I do know. I've only been here 58 years, so I don't know a whole lot. But you know what? It's so much more because he's so big. He's so mighty, and he's so strong, he's so awesome, glory to God. He's a mighty God, glory to God. And I'm foolish enough to believe just that, glory to God. I have learned through trials and tribulations, through different situations, not to look at what it looked like. Because the Bible said that just shall walk by faith and not by what I see, glory to God. So I learned how to train myself not to go by what I see, glory to God, but to go by what I believe, glory to God. And I believe the word of God is true, glory to God. And that God can do anything except fail, glory to God. I believe that with all my heart that God can do that, glory to God. I don't care what I'm going through. There ain't no turning around no more. There ain't no turning back no more. It ain't going to happen, glory to God. I'm telling you it ain't going to happen. If it is, you need to get me in shape and say, wait a minute, brother Bo. We got to get back on track. We can't go that way. We need each other. 
in this world, in this day, in this time, we need each other, glory to God. We really need each other. Let's go to the word of God. Let me set this up a little bit, if you don't mind. We're, this this scripture is talking about uh, a giant named Goliath and talking about a young boy named David. And there's a battle that's about to go on. And they're getting ready to go to fight, to war with this, the Philistines army. And he's got Israel bagged up on the other side. But how many of you know God will make a way, glory to God? He's got somebody to come to your rescue. God has always got somebody. You know, every situation I be in, I'm crazy enough just to, and I tell the church, don't give up. If somebody said no and God said yes, keep going back. The Bible said knock and keep knocking. The Bible said ask and keep asking, glory to God. So it don't matter, glory to God, what nobody else say, glory to God. It only matter what God said about it. See, we don't live by the rules of the world, glory to God. We be real, live by the rules of God, glory to God. What did God say about it, glory to God? Mm. When you go to God, got a situation, check out the manual book, glory to God. Uh, what do the instructions say in the manual, glory to God? What do it tell us to do, glory to God? Or somebody say it's never too long to pray or never too much prayer, glory to God. Or the Bible say, glory to God, man should pray always and don't faint, glory to God. You can't give up when you're praying, glory to God. You can't give up because the situation don't look like it's going to change. You got to trust God through the hard times, glory to God. You got to trust God through the bad times, glory to God. It doesn't matter. God will always be God. So they're going through a situation here. And there's a little boy named David. And these men are warriors and they soldiers and in the army, glory to God. But David was a soldier of a different army. He was a soldier in the army of the Lord, glory to God. He knew something, glory to God, about an, a battle that they didn't know, glory to God. He had some run-ins with some enemies and someone trying to steal some of his little lambs and the, 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 the lion and the, the bear, and David killed them. And David had a rep. Sometimes God can build up a reputation with you. You've been through a lot and you know God will bring you through that. You've been through this and you know God will bring you through that. Looking back over your life, you can see how much God has brought you through. You can see how God brought you through when you thought there was no way out. God brought you. Let's go into this word. Mm. Let's start at the 13th verse. If I can get a read, I'm sorry. If I can get a reader. Oh, wait a minute. I think there's a 31st verse. I can't see through these glasses. 41st, 41st verse. If I can get a reader. Can I get a reader? What chapter did you say? 32, 33. Let me make sure I'm on the right. 33rd, chapter 17, 1 Samuel 17, 33rd verse. I just need a reader. I can't see through these glasses. I couldn't find mine. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Come on. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took the lamb out of the flock. Mm-hmm. And I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out from his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by the beard, and smote him, and slew him. Mm -hmm. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. Listen to me for a moment. David took what he had went through, and when he came up against another situation, glory to God, that was opposing the living God, he used that situation, glory to God, to build up his faith, glory to God, because he had fought a bear and fought a lion, and he had slew it. And he was talking to Saul, and he was telling Saul that, look, this uncircumcised Philistine, you ever talk to him in your problems like that? Oh, you don't know that God don't brought You have to sometimes encourage yourself. Amen. God, you brought me through this, and you yeah. brought me through this, God. I know you can bring me through this, God. You started rem reminiscing I was sick, God, and the doctor had gave me up, God. I didn't have a job, God, and you brought me through that, glory to God. And you look at that situation. Amen. 
And you let the devil know no matter what you bring, my God is still God. He will still bring me through no matter what the situation is. As long as he is God and sit up on the throne, God will bring me through it. David, Saul began to tell David about who the Philistine was. David began to tell Saul who he was. And he knew that he had been through some stuff and been through the storm and he had, he, he had fought some battles. See, you don't never know what God is preparing you for. You're going through something, but you don't know why you're going through it. Amen. You think it's just about you. Yeah. It could be about your children. It could be about your family. It could be about a friend. You might not be going through it just because of you or just right. for you. Yeah. It could be going through it for somebody else. Right. But how would you go through it, glory to God? Will you go through it with joy or will you go through it mourning? Will you go through it, glory to God? You know, I was listening at them singing the songs and everything, and this battle took this 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 battle took place on some ground that was belonging to Judah. If you do a study on Judah, you know Judah was the praisers. So he came to have a battle in the wrong place. The praises had went forth, and the Bible said God inhabits the praises and the prayers of His people. And when the praises goes up, the victory comes down, glory yeah. to God. And so Judah said, all right, now see, you took, sometimes they pick and battle with the wrong people. You don't know my God. You don't know who I serve, glory to God. You don't know how bad my God is, glory to God. You telling me how bad this man is, glory to God. Telling David this man was a warrior from his youth, glory to God. And David, he told David, said, you just a youth. But David knew something about God. I have talked to people that have got degrees and everything else in theological uh, school and went to school, and I asked them a question. You know, my prayer was that when God called me to preach the gospel, God, you teach me. Nothing is wrong with that, going to school. But I said, God, you train me. So I got on my knees, and I started doing a lot more praying and seeking God. And I asked God, I said, Lord, train me. I, I don't know how to preach. But, Lord, if you will use my mouth and speak through me, I'll open it up. You just speak. That's all you got to do, just speak. So I started learning how to fast and to pray and to cry out to God and to call on the name of Jesus because somebody told me that there was power in the name of Jesus, glory to God. So I believe in that name, glory to God. I believe it is no other name greater than the name of Jesus, glory to God. I believe there's power in the name of Jesus and the devil fear and tremble at the name of Jesus, yes. glory to God. I know God is able to do anything in self fear. He has proven himself to me over and over. I've seen him raise the dead. I've seen that. Because any time you show me anything in the Bible, you know what I'm asking you? Is that supposed to apply to us today? I'm supposed to be able to do that? Mark 16, chapter 17, verse. Said these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devil, yeah. lay hands on the sick, wow. tread on serpents, glory to God, drink of any deadly thing in the shelter. These signs shall follow them that believe. Yes. So today I want to know, are we believers? Come on. Are we believers? Yes. Come on now, wait a minute, that's sort of low. Are we believers? Yes. Come on, glory to God. The world is roaring and cheering for Alabama and Auburn. And I'm asking you to tell me, are you a believer yeah. of God? I need to hear you, glory to God. Yeah. We're not ashamed of the gospel. No matter where we go, we're not ashamed of the gospel. Amen. Not ashamed of it. We went to Atlanta to a family reunion, and I began to get up and witness and talk about God just like I'm talking about God here. I'm not going to be ashamed of the gospel Amen. for nobody. And I'm not afraid to lift my voice up. We be watching the game sometime, they'll jump up out of the seat when their team score a touchdown. But my God been scoring touchdown from the beginning of time, glory yeah. to God. And he haven't stopped yet, glory to God. He's been running through the enemy camp, glory to God, knocking down walls, glory to God. When they put a barrier up, my God, take down the barrier, glory to God. Uh, there is no weapon that's formed against us that shall prosper, glory to God, because God said, glory to God, you are more than a conqueror. Through Christ, they strengthen you. I don't never want my faith to get weary to the point that I can't believe God to be more than a conqueror. Amen. I don't want that. Amen. I don't want my faith to never get to the part 
that I'm taking God for granted. God is doing things that I ain't never saw before. He's God. When I needed a job, God created a job. When they said, we don't have a job for you. That ain't what God said. I went down there. My son was in, uh, he was in gang, and, and my daughter was in a gang. And I went down to apply for the job at Trinity Rail Car, and I took the test and passed the test, but they only had night jobs. And I said, well, I can't work a night job because my son is in a gang. He's 16 years old. And at that time, I wasn't married. I was divorced. And I told him, I said, I, I, I can't work at night and leave him there by himself. That won't work. So they said, well, we don't have a job. You know, we got one for nights, but we don't have one for days. As leaving the place, God spoke to me and said, I want you to go on a three-day fast, come back and tell them, I said, they got a job for you. Now, that sounds sort of crazy. But I began to tell someone what God said. They said, well, what are you waiting on? I went on that three-day fast. This is what I said. You learned learn something about God. I went back, and at this time, there was a black guy that was uh, the personnel manager. But see, when I, God just tests you sometimes to see when you'll be obedient. There was a switch going on in the personnel manager office. I didn't know God was putting a man of God in the personnel office. So what I, he told me to go back and go to fast and come back. I go on this fast and I come back. And I tell the guy, I said, uh, I just came to check and see if you all got a job on day shift. I need a job. And he said, no, we don't have a job. We got them on night shift. He said, don't I remember you? I said, yes, sir, you remember me. He said, yeah, I know. I thought we told you that before. I said, you did tell me that before. He said, well, we, James, we still don't have a job on day shift. This is what I told him, exactly what God told me. I said, God said, you got a job for me. Just like that. Just, I'm serious. Oh, he just cracked his side laughing. He just, I mean, cracked up laughing. He thought it was the funniest thing. But there was another guy God was switching around and putting him in place. Amen. He was sitting there while the guy was talking to me. I said, well, I need a job, and I just wanted to check. That's what God told me. You got a job for me. The other one that was coming in to be the personnel manager, he said, James, step outside for a moment. I step outside for a moment. He, a moment, he called me back. He said, well, we really don't have a day shift job. But what we're going to do, we're going to create. Doesn't that sound like God? We're going to create a job for you. And the job they created paid more than the job I was applying for. So the personnel manager walked me down to the job and said, if anybody asks you how you got this job, because it was union, he said, you tell them to come see me. When I got the job and I asked the, the, the supervisor and the farmer, said, what am I supposed to do? He said, all you got to do is put the bottom on the train and use the air wrench and zip it up. I said, well, how many trains are we supposed to do a day? He said, six. I said, wait a minute. This, this got to be a gimmick. You got about three guys on each side. You don't need six trains a day. Something got to be wrong with this picture. So it was so easy that I didn't even believe that I had this job. So I went to the, the supervisor. I said, well, what do I do when we ain't got a train car to put a, uh, the bottom on it? He said, go in the break room for a minute. Take a break. I said, really? That don't, really? You want to trick me, I think. So I went in the break room, took a break, and they would take time of uh, putting the cars, the bottom up under the car. I walked away from that job, and this is what I got out of that job. If they don't have it, God can create it. Amen. God began to teach me. He said, I'm still a creator. I haven't stopped creating yet. Hallelujah. I haven't stopped creating, whether it's creating a lung that you need, whether it's creating, glory to God, a heart, I can do that, glory to God. I can go back and they'll say, I don't see what's wrong with your heart. I don't know, I don't know what happened, but it ain't there no more. I'm telling you, God is God all by himself. Amen. It doesn't matter what other people think about you. Amen. It doesn't matter what they may say about you. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. I'm telling you, God is God, and I'm so God be God. Amen. We have a young lady that came out of the church and she tripped and she fell and she fell on her chest. Didn't know she was in fourth stage of cancer. Had no idea. She, it kept hurting and she decided to go to the doctor. When she went to the doctor, they said, you're in fourth stage of cancer, we got to rush you right in and do an operation. She called me crying and then everything else and uh, she, her breast was infected and they said, we got to do surgery right now. 
called her in. And they said, well, we don't know whether you're going to make it or not because you're in search of the last stage of it. And what God said, God said he's able to do anything that's up for you. Let me tell you what God did. I know it sounds crazy, but it's okay because God does stuff like that. My thought is not your thought. My ways are not your ways. So I understand, God, now that he works in ways that we don't know about. Three o'clock in the morning, God wakes me up and he says, I want you to write a blood prayer. Have no idea what he's talking about. I have no idea what he's talking about. But this is what I have learned, to just obey him. So my faith got me up out of the bed. My faith got the paper and the pencil. My faith got me sitting at the desk, and I'm just thinking, God, what, what, how do I do that? And God had me to research what the blood does in the body and how the different cells operate. I wrote this blood prayer out and went to the hospital, and I spoke it to her. I said, God gave me this blood prayer for you. Everything's going to work out fine. She was getting weary, and she had been in a situation where uh, her mother had told her, glory to God, that if she didn't denounce God, that she wasn't going to have anything to do with her. And her mom was a witch at this time. And she told her, I will not denounce God. So the mom didn't want nothing to do with it. She wouldn't come to the hospital to see her anything. But God, Amen. he's always there to make a way. Yeah. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. That was stuff I saw that I never thought I would see. We went through this phase with her. We was praying with her and, and everything. And the, the breast had got infected. infected and, 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 and she went back and the doctor didn't want to see her no more. The doctor told her, said, this is not a hotel. Get up and go home. I would not have believed that had I not been sitting there with her. You couldn't have told me the doctor would have said that. He said, this is not a hotel. Get up and go home. This is what the doctor told her. Well, thank God that God always got somebody in place. There was a nurse there that had been in the army. She was a nurse in the army, and she was now working at the hospital. She went and got this doctor that uh, was specialized in infections. He came and told her, you're not going home. I'm going to write the order for you to stay in the hospital. So he started dealing with it and everything, and they told her that she probably wouldn't make it through this. That ain't what God said. God didn't say that. So I don't care what you face and what did God say about it. If you're more than a conqueror, what makes you operate like the natural man? You're, no, 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 no. You are a spiritual man operating in the natural world. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. You are a spiritual man operating in the natural world. You're not a natural man operating in a spiritual world. You are a spiritual man yeah. operating in the natural world. So the natural world doesn't affect you like it affects everybody else. Wow. See, we got to start believing who we are in Christ. Yeah. We got to believe who we are in God. Yeah. The church got to get back on fire. The church got to get back on fire and teach and preach that God is God and beside him there is no other. Amen. We got to do that. So she went on and went back and forth to the doctor, went and got a lawyer, and the lawyer she got knew the doctor. He wouldn't take the case. So she went and got another lawyer, and she went to another doctor. They went to a later doctor, and she said that when she went to the later doctor, she just started crying because she couldn't believe somebody had butchered her like that. Said she couldn't believe it. But let me show you what God did. God began to heal this lady. I mean, I'm serious. God healed this woman. Today she don't have cancer. They can't find it. She don't have no cancer. Everything, even her skin complexion, is more beautiful than it was before she had cancer. God healed this woman, brought her back, and guess what she's doing? She is evangelizing. Isn't God good? She's preaching the gospel for Jesus, glory to God. This is the God that we serve. Somebody needs to tell about the God we serve. See, we've gotten off a of track, glory to God, because we are overcomers through the words of our testimony and through the blood of the Lamb, glory to God. There is still power in the blood of Jesus, glory to God. There is still power in the blood of Jesus, glory to God. You can do this in Jesus' name. You can do this in Jesus' name, glory to God. You can do it. Sometimes you have to tell the flesh, I can't let the flesh contradict what I do. Sometimes I'm tired and worn off. Sister Donnie, I'm being honest with you. Worn out, just, just worn out. Told my little, kid, my little grandkids in there, so granddad would be running all the time, even on Saturday, he's wide open. I said, but you know what? I got to do this because this is God's will. And that's all that matters to me now is God's will. I'm serious. That's all that matters. It's not about a car, not about a house. All that matters to me is God's will. 
And you know what? I'm getting a little older, but you know what? My life is all about Jesus. All about Jesus, glory to God. I'm serious. All about Jesus. All about it. I love having fun. I love all that. But what I'm telling you is nothing comes before God in my life. Nothing. Not my wife, not my children. Nothing comes before God in my life. It ain't going to happen. When I married my wife, I told her, said, and listen, there will always be somebody before you. She said, what do you mean? I was already married to God when I met you. Now, I don't care what you do, I would never leave God. I don't care what you do, I would never leave God. And she said the same thing. But I want her to know God will always be first in my life. Always be first in my life. And when you look at this, I, I look at David and I think about David. This is what I think about. When they was getting ready to uh, call his brother to be king, his father didn't even call him. You ever been in a situation sometime where your family don't even look at you like you're, you're worth that? Uh, you're, you're somebody, your family, they talk down on you. But God had a plan. So David goes and he gets ready to fight Goliath. And Goliath is doing a lot of talking. He's talking about this. Sometimes the devil be talking in our ears. The devil is telling us this and he's telling us that and, and we're listening. Sometimes we're, we're quiet enough instead of pleading the blood of Jesus, we're quiet enough to listen to what he said. And we're going around and repeat it when the power of life and death is in our tongue. The power of life and death is in our tongue. What are you speaking today? What are you saying with your mouth? What are you saying? If the power of life and death is in the tongue, what are you saying about yourself? What are you saying about your situation? What do, what do you believe? I don't care what I believe about you. It won't affect you unless you believe it. You got to understand, son, God has called you for this time. David was called, and there will always be somebody that will go to battle for God. He will always have somebody he can depend on. He will always have somebody he can trust. God will always have somebody he can trust. So David shows up, and his brother get mad at him and everything, and uh. They ask him, what is he doing? He's supposed to be keeping the sheep and, and, and for the father. And why did he come out there? Well, the father had sent him to bring food to his brother. Listen at this now. I'm telling you, God will have people in the right place at the right time just for you. Amen. See, you, they couldn't stop David because God had a calling upon David's life. God had a plan for God, David's life. So he worked it out just in time. You don't have to worry because God is an on-time God. I heard somebody say, well, he may not come when you want him, but he's never too late, but he's always on time, glory to God. You can trust God when you can't trust nobody else, glory to God. You can lean on God when you can't lean on nobody else, glory to God. You can believe that God will bring you through, glory to God, when there's nobody else to help you get through, glory to God. But the God that you serve, glory to God, is still as real as the day you first got saved. He's still that same God. Same God. So David talked to his brother and he stays humble. You know, as being saints of God, we got to always stay humble and meek. David talked to his brother and he stays humble. He said, what, what have I done? What have I done? But there was something that just got up on David's skin when they was talking about his God. Do it bother you when somebody is talking about your God? And they're not saying the right thing about my God. It bothers me. I'm serious. It bothers me. I'm not going to let you just say anything about God. I just stand there and don't say nothing. That's not me. No, no. I know my God, and I know who he is, glory to God. You know, just like a man, when somebody says something about his wife, you're not just going to say anything about my wife, and I'm standing there. That's not going to happen. You, you understand what I'm saying? No, no, no. I'm a man of the God's own heart. Yeah, I said that. I'm a man of the God's own heart. Hear what I'm saying? I'm made in the image of God. All of that is going on about me, glory to God. I'm a man of the God's own heart, made in the image of God. I'm John Al with Jesus Christ. I am somebody. Amen. Huh? Well, brother, Robo, you brag. No, I'm boasting in Jesus. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm boasting in Jesus. I'm somebody in God. Amen. You won't make me think nothing different, glory to God. I am somebody in God. Yeah. Hear me? In the eyesight of God, I am special, glory to God. If it had not been nobody but me, he would have still went up on the cross. Amen. Yeah. I believe with all my heart. Amen. I believe it. And I thank God for coming up under the teaching of the older saints of God. I really, really, really appreciate that. Coming up under the teaching of the old saints of God. Where they believe that you live holy. Where they believe that you live right. Come on now. 
You couldn't do no anything. And everything can come up in the church. God had prophecy going forth. Prophecy could see and God would warn you about what you was doing. But see, today we come up in the church and everything going on. Because everybody's scared to say something to somebody because of what they may think about them. I'm afraid that, 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 that it's not going to happen with me. You may not like me, but I'm going to say it. Because I ain't going to stand before God. And God said, why didn't you tell him what I told you? No, 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 no. Your blood is not going to be on my hand. You may not like me, but I promise you, if God says, say it, I'm saying it. Amen. Now you deal with that. So David was began to go out, and I like how he went to battle with Goliath. Goliath was just talking about what he, see, Goliath saw him in one way. David saw himself in another way. He saw himself with a God that was able to do anything. He, see, God had a reputation with David. David had a reputation with God. God had brought David through a battle and another battle, and God had did some more stuff they probably didn't even talk about. The Bible probably didn't even mention it. But he had gotten victory, so he got to learn God. In my walk with God, I've got to learn God, who he is, what he's capable of, and what he's not capable of. The Bible said, God, it's impossible for God to lie. Impossible. So the Bible said, by, your, by my stripes you are healed, I believe that. I'd rather die believing than to die doubting. I would rather die believing than to die doubting. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm going to believe God to the very end. To the very end, I'm going to believe God. I'm going to trust God to the end. I'm going to hold on, glory to God. If it's just by thread, I'm holding on, glory to God. But I'm going to believe God to the very end, glory to God. I'm not giving up like that, glory to God. David got five stones and put them in his pouch. Lots of people said, well, the Philistine had five more brothers. But let me tell you something. Sometimes you got to keep your prayer life built up. You got to keep your prayer life. You got to be prepared. You hear me? You got to be prepared. Because let me tell you something. The joy of the Lord is your strength. If you ain't got no joy, you won't have no strength. You hear what I'm saying? So I, I, I get happy with just me and God in the room. You hear what I'm saying? Just me and God in the room, I get happy. Sometime I tell my wife, I'm about to run through the house. You need to move. I got to go. I said, I was in there praying, and God revealed something to me. I got to go. It was good to me, just like that. So what I'm saying, when I come into the house of God, this is what God said. He said, where there are two or three gathered in my name. I can, what's, what's that? So you say he's in the midst also? If I come in the house of God and God is in there, Whatever I need is up in there. If I come in the house of God and God himself is up in there, I tell the people at church, don't come in church doing a whole lot of talking. Get your mind. Enter into the court, into his gates with thanksgiving, into his court with praying. Come on now. We ain't got to talk about what we went through yesterday and what we've been going through. Get your mind on Jesus. Because somebody in the church need a healing. Somebody need a deliverance. See, I came in a time where we cast out devils. I still do it. We deal with them devils. See, you can be on drugs, but I believe I can bring a drug demon up out of you, little baby. I believe you can be delivered, glory to God. I can believe that you can be changed, glory to God. Nothing is too hard for God to do, glory to God. Nothing is too hard for God to do. So what, glory to God? You're an alcoholic, glory to God. God can deliver you from alcohol, glory to God. So what if you on drugs? God is powerful enough to deliver you from drugs, glory to God. Your God... It's a God of all power, glory to God. Read the story about the woman that was, uh, had the issue of blood. God healed her. You hear, read the story about the man with the withered hand. God healed him. Well, wait a minute. What's your problem? Why? You got to the devil and say, well, you know what? I, let me tell you what I learned. I'm getting older. And I learned that the devil tried to tell me some things about myself and this happened and that happened. I said, well, wait a minute. What about the blood? Have it lost its power? Has the blood lost its power? The blood is as strong today as it was 2,000 years ago. That blood is still just as strong today. I'm so glad God changed my life. I'm so glad God changed my life. Been out in the streets, go to God, doing it and everything. He had to teach me how to be a man. Guess what I asked God? Show me how to be a man. I don't know how to be no man. Show me how. Because I was learned by the guys in the street. And I knew I didn't know how to be a man. Nobody in the church never got me and said, son, let me talk to you about how you treat a woman, how you should be. A... Nobody talked to me like that. 